<laughs> their diet. So if you had to tell, say, a bunch of active individuals what to eat, what would you tell them to eat? It just meat, vegetables, and tubers. That's it. Meat, vegetables, yeah. and tubers. No dairy, legumes, or grains. Yeah. No. For, as a baseline, I would say no. Uh, I often get the question, why should I avoid grains and legumes? And I purposefully left dairy out of the equation. And whenever I, I ask that, I'm asked that question, I will typically use these four things. I'll say, well, there's the immune, immunogenic and allergenic uh, properties of proteins that are found in uh, grains and legumes. There's unsustainable grain agriculture. It's not clear whether or not legume agriculture is sustainable. Then there's the whole theory of food palatability and reward, uh, which is championed by uh, Stéphane Guinet. Uh, I hope that most of you know his work. And then there's nutrient density. And what I like about these four things is that when you present that to someone, you have a choice. You can either address it from an evolutionary angle, or you can address it from a very simple, maybe biology, psychology angle. And this is what you get. Here's your average nutrient density score. Here's your category. Organ meats at the top, herbs and, herbs and spices, nuts and seeds, cacao, fish and seafood, pork, beef, eggs, dairy, vegetables, lamb, veal, poultry, legumes, is where, this is where they show up, processed meat, Vegetables, plant fats and oils, fruit, animal skin, uh, grains and pseudo cereals that are cooked, refined and processed fats and oils, animal fats and oils, grains and processed fruit. So conclusions, the available data suggests that a diet centered around meat, vegetables, fruits, nuts and seed is very nutrient dense and can easily provide all essential nutrients in adequate quantities. The notion that grains and legumes are nutrient dense likely originates from a lack of segregation between raw grains and legumes which are inedible uh, versus cooked grains and legumes. So these should not be part of the equation. Animal foods are highly ranked, even though raw and cooked meat were not segregated. And essential fatty acids, essential amino acids, vitamin B7, some minerals, and bioavailability were not taken into account. So imagine that they're going to go even higher if we had all of this data. But yeah, it's just meat and vegetables and tubers. I know it's not sexy, but that, that's, that's what it is.